So I don't think I need to tell you, but the government has worked themselves into a very precarious situation right now. And one of the biggest things you absolutely cannot forget is if you'd like to support the channel directly, you can shop at OnlyTacticalFans.com and purchase one of these Freedom Beanies right here. And man, does it look good. And don't forget, any order over $30, you will automatically get the mystery patch, which I can't show you. And I can't tell you what it is because the design I had thought up in my head doesn't look like what it turned out to be. So, I can't sell that to you, but I can give it to you for free. I'm willing to do that. And that's important right now because I am, as you can currently see, in Florida. Hotel bouncing right now with the trial that's supposed to take a month long. And that gets expensive very, very quick. Without your guys' support, I honestly don't know how I would do it. So the first thing we got that the government is really in a strange position over would be the bump stock band. The problem they ran into is in the Fifth Circuit, they were like, no, this is an accessory. It is not a firearm and it cannot be regulated by the NFA. So therefore, it is legal to go. So we got one circuit where there was a split decision where they don't know if it is or is not a machine gun. Then you got another circuit where they're like, okay, it's definitely a machine gun. And then you got the circuit over here where they're like, it's not a machine gun. The problem is, is they absolutely did not want this to go to the Supreme Court for a bunch of different reasons. So let's pretend this actually goes to the Supreme Court. This will be, to the best of my knowledge, the very first time the ATF themselves has been going to the Supreme Court. Yeah, states go all the time, like, for example, the Bruin decision. The state of New York went to the Supreme Court. They argued their case, and as you notice with Bruin decision, they didn't just say, yes, you can have concealed carry in New York, they added a bunch of stuff on there, which was a landmark decision, and it's just bulldozing through a bunch of gun laws. Same thing with Heller. So that's a state. So let's pretend that the ATF grants, grants cert to this. They will be addressing the ATF specifically. So they're not just going to say bump stocks are or are not illegal. They're going to make a landmark decision that is going to totally change the face of how gun laws and the ATF operates, because that's just what they do. So we have a couple different options here. One, they grant cert, and it goes up, and that happens. Two, they don't grant cert. Now, if they don't grant cert, obviously the country split up in a bunch of different little factions on what you legally can and can't do. So in my head, I think strongly they're gonna grant cert and instruct all the lesser courts on how to ha handle this particular case. So they either will or will not grant cert. Now at this point, you have another set of options. They will either rule in favor of the ATF, or they're gonna go through there, not with a scalpel, with a chainsaw chopping up how they do particular things and totally change the landscape, which is what I think is gonna happen. Cause the ATF built the bump stock case on, I'm just gonna call it fallacies. And the fallacy they built it on was the Chevron deference, which is granted to bureaucracies. So if there's something in question, they can make a decision on the fly so not every little thing needs to move up. But this wasn't something in question. They literally rewrote the law to make bump stocks a machine gun. And I know that's a problem because they are not a legislative branch of the government. All they can do is enforce the laws on the books. Like they can't go in there and be like, a pitcher is a machine gun, because where in the NFA does it say a pitcher qualifies as a machine gun? No, there are very specific definitions that Congress made for machine guns, and if they wanted it to be wider or more reaching, they would have simply wrote it in there. That, that's not a problem. They have no problems doing that. They have very specific laws that they want done in a very specific manner. So on that sort of thing, like the ATF just can't do that. And they've been doing it basically like you got to understand the bump stock case is the foundation for almost everything they've done lately. Like they're flip flopping with solvent traps. They're flip flopping with triggers, the FRTs, like all of that has been built off of the foundation that federal judges have ruled what they've done with the bump stock has been okay. So like I said, should they get cert granted and then not go exactly how they want it to go, everything will change. Now, at first they weren't pushing for cert, which 
I get, because this is scary. There could be thousands of ATF agents that lose their job overnight, depending on what the Supreme Court says. Remember, 80% of their job, or 86%, I'll roll in the figure right here, is just going and arresting people that violate 922, whether that's 922R, 922N, 922G, in some way, shape, or form. It isn't stopping crime, it isn't breaking up drug cartels, it isn't getting illegal machine guns off the state, it's off the planet, it's literally harassing American citizens. All 922R penal codes are just, you're in illegal possession of a firearm for some sort of reason and there's a lot of them. And that's literally what they do 86% of the time. So I mean, this going to the Supreme Court could be big, like earth shattering, <laughs> the world, or I should say the country is operating in a new way. The next big one that came up is 4473s. So in Texas, the 4473 has a little thing on there, which is another 922G, or I should say a 922 penal code violation, which is 922 G3, and that is if you use marijuana, you can't have firearms. And they ruled that, uh, no, that's bullshit. Nowhere when the Second Amendment was written, because remember, Bruin instructed you to go back to the time of the founding of the Second Amendment, look at how cases were ruled, and rule in the same way. Where in the Second Amendment does it say if you like to get stoned, you can't have a firearm? Now, there were laws, like, little ones, it, it, it gets real wishy-washy at this point. Uh, the one everyone's been hanging their hat on, or I should say the anti-gun people have been hanging their hat on, is some sort of law where if you feel your neighbor's a threat, they got to go to court, and it's called an assurity law. I don't really quite understand the details of this. I'm still doing my research on exactly what it is and what it means. But from what I'm gathering from the research other people have done, it has nothing to do with any sort of firearm ban. You just go to the court and be like, no, I'm not going to hurt them. Here's some money I'll put down to prove it that you can take if I should happen to hurt this guy within a set period of time. So Texas ruled against that, which is pretty cool. The next one, obviously, is Minnesota. They ruled that, yes, 18 to 20-year-olds can carry a firearm. Because, again, show me where. Anywhere in the Second Amendment, it says you have to be a certain age in order to defend yourself. As a matter of fact, there are laws that go around the militia, which goes younger than 18. So I believe that was a very powerful thing. And we're just seeing all this stuff get peeled back, and we're correcting the mistakes of our fathers and our grandfathers. They dropped the ball. But you got to understand how they were thinking back then. They were like, okay, these laws are specifically against African Americans and Indians that won't affect us, so who really cares what goes on? Our local sheriffs are not gonna charge us with these laws because we're white. Things have changed, and now everyone is under the same umbrella, and we're just trying to reel it back. Just bring it back in, so the Second Amendment is followed as written, which is the goal of like everybody on YouTube on the firearms channel, which is pretty cool. So that's pretty much what I got for you right now. I will shoot more videos in the future. Again, definitely shop at onlytacticalfans.com. That's how I'm funding this whole thing down in Florida. And I appreciate all the guys, all the help you guys have given me. Like, thank you. I really, really do. Anyway, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.